I'm joined by Resolve and Golden Sound today, and we've decided to fight. We're making a tier list, and to do so, we made three separate tier lists. We're going to compare what each of us has ranked over 200 headphones as, uh, and, and fight about it. So, here you go. So, going into this, this is, uh, we need some dis disclaimers and talk a little bit about the setup uh, first. Yes. We actually tried to do this ranking list before already and just came to the conclusion that we all disagree. <laughs> um, and we also disagree about like how to do the setup. So this is round two, right. trying again, uh, just where we made our own. I don't know how you guys informed yours. Mine was basically structured similarly to the way that Corinne does his tonal technical dichotomy, where basically he gives a tone score, a tonal score, and then a technical score. I obviously don't like those words. I like to think of it more along the lines of like sound signature and then the subjective experience. You know, so there is goodness to be found in both and badness to be found in both. And that's kind of what informed my list here. But how did you guys come up with uh, your ranking? Well, people have always asked me to do just purely a sound quality tier list, so I did mine just one column, purely sound quality. In my dream world, I think the perfect list is one that does has rankings for like sound quality and comfort, you know, like timbre, like all these other various like tonal qualities. But this time, I did only strictly sound quality in one column. And obviously, that's that's going to be subjective, like a gut reaction sound quality, like how you feel about it, sound quality wise. Gut reaction sound quality. And including some things that I know from the community, like I, I put Sisvara in a higher tier than I personally enjoy it for, but I know that a lot of people consider that to be a very good sounding headphone. So at, at a certain point, we're also considering... Weighted subjectivity. Yeah, like we're also considering how we expect this stuff to be received by, you know, a wide range of people, not just ourselves. Yes. And, and uh, Golden? Mine's pretty much the same. I've gone for just straight up sound quality. I'm looking at sort of tonality and technical performance all as one thing. Uh, the only thing I'm sort of knocking things down for a little bit is obviously practical and comfort uses. That's something which I'm thinking about, but for the most part, this is just sound quality. The other consideration here is that this is no EQ applied, right? So yes. no, no aftermarket pads, no custom EQs, um, just kind of like what you get when you buy the thing, <laughs> right? Were EQ or pads involved in this list, this list would be very different. Yeah. There's a lot of headphones in here which I've ranked quite low because of certain issues which are really easy to fix or headphones which I've ranked high, but others I would pick above them if I was able to use EQ. Yeah, and so for our tiers here, we, we go all the way up to S+. And I, I actually don't have any headphones in S+, in my list. Because S plus hmm. is only reserved for with EQ. <laughs> That's basically how I see it. Fair enough. I only have like two in S plus. I do have a number of headphones in the how did this happen tier. Yes. So that's the other side of it, where basically there are ones that we haven't heard, but then there are also ones that are just flat out terrible headphones that should not exist, that are, uh, let's say, offensive to the community in, in some respect. Um you know, the fact that they are things that people can buy is a shame. That's how I would put it. The existence of said product makes the entirety of our timeline worse. One other thing that comes to mind is uh, we definitely have not had the chance to hear everything. There are definitely going to be headphones that aren't on this list that probably should be on this list. We haven't been able to, you know, scour the globe <laughs> for every single headphone to put it here um so if, but we still have about 200 headphones on here which is a lot well a little under 200 so if you have a headphone that uh is not on this list that you feel should be on this list definitely uh note that in the comments and then we'll consider it for next time it's also a good indicator of things that we should look out for to try and review the last thing that i want to say about this is i think people are bound to come at this i mean it's guaranteed that people are going to come at this with the intention of validating their purchases and then are going to come and then come away from it you know realizing that oh the headphone that they have or that they love is in a lower tier for us so the disclaimer there is that like this is this is just like three dickheads online talking about headphones <laughs> if you have a product that is lower ranked on our lists here or any of our lists but you love it then that's great like this is not meant to be you know your yeah your opinions or your tastes are terrible or whatever. Um, 
they just might not line up with ours. Right, and we're excluding really important things like comfort and build quality and appearance and packaging and just a lot of other facets that do affect the end user experience. This is just our opinion. This is not necessarily the correct yeah. ranking list. We don't even agree with each other on all of these. So uh, if you see something which you disagree with, that's totally fine. Your opinion might differ. And I think that's kind of the point. The fact that we couldn't come up with a singular list among the three of us because we disagree so strongly. <laughs> um, it's kind of the the indication that like we shouldn't all just, you know, have everything be boiled down to one person's opinion. Um, We're pretty close on a lot of it, though. It's not, uh, we haven't got three completely separate lists. It's just there's a few interesting uh, entries here where we've got some fairly different results. Yeah, so there is there is definitely some consensus. And a lot of it is like, I can see how you would get there. Um, I think this is bound to break some hearts. Um, but I want folks to remember that our job here is to tell the truth about these products to the best of our ability. And ultimately, a tier list is super reductive to... Um, you know, a headphones performance. And so there might be headphones that sound totally different from one another that are in the same tier. Um, and so just because it's in the same tier doesn't mean that we're saying this sounds, as, you know, the same as this other thing. Um, I think that's that's an important thing to, to consider as well. So with that out of the way, all those caveats and disclaimers and all of that good stuff out of the way, let's dive into the tier list and we'll start with... Alphabetical start order? with the A's and the, the top one is Abyss. The first one on the list here is the Diana TC. Um, I ranked this one in A with a tone grade of B and a technical grade of S. Uh, how did you guys rank these? I ranked it as an A tier. Uh, I had that one lower. I had it as a B tier just because the what's the technicalities a S tier definitely. Uh, it's the most technical of the Diana series. The treble just didn't quite sit well with me. I think that is just me though. I know plenty of other people who like it, but for me, that just knocked it down to a B. Diana V two. Um, how did you guys rate this? Uh, B. I had that as a B as well. Uh, that one was a little bit the opposite. I like the tonality quite a bit more, but it's less technical than the Diana TC. But it ended up overall mm -hmm. about the same place. I also had it in B tier. Uh, tone B and technical A. Diana MR. MR was my first S tier. I was listening to that. Actually, I listened to it again this week. It's genuinely insane, and I think it's the best thing they've ever made by a massive margin. I don't know if I like it more than the 1266. Okay. Just the, the 1266 which we'll talk about in a sec is its own thing uh, that's my favorite Diana for sure though that's in S tier for me both in technicalities and in tuning and I haven't heard it so I am going to abstain it's an X tier for me X gonna give it to you alright uh, moving on to the AB1266 Phi TC um, I gave this one a B tier but this is weird because the tone this is why I wanted to break it up into tonal and subjective right I'm just calling it that yep I give it a D for tonal and S for, for subjective. Um, so, so it is a very polarizing headphone. It's very, I feel unfair to say, oh, it's S tier or it's D tier. It doesn't really belong in either of those. So unfortunately, I have right. to put it in the middle. I, uh, I rank this one in S tier as well. And I'm similar kind of logic with you. I The tuning on it is weird anyone who says that it's the most neutral transparent sounding it's it's not it's just not i'm sorry the tuning is wacky but in a way that really kind of works especially with a lot of electronic music and the technical performance is great and i absolutely love them i did buy a pair so even though the tuning is not neutral it's really weird i love it and i put it in s2 and and this is just just a note here this is kind of what i mean when like we're talking about like some of the more fine-grained FR quirks that exist are potentially enjoyable to people, even if the overall wide band, like the overall coarse grain tuning is batshit crazy. <laughs> I kind of did what you did, Andrew, and I averaged it, and I ended up in A tier because the technical abilities of it are insane, but the tuning is a little bit weird to me, so I kind of just met it in the middle and put it in A. Next up is AKG. K371. I put both of those, the 371 and 361, in B tier. Me too. Yeah, I'm in B tier as well. For me, it was tonality is A tier, but the subjective is C tier, so B tier. Um, I haven't heard any of the rest of the AKGs, so I will defer to you guys on those. Uh, those are the only ones I've heard as well, so DMS, you're going to have to take this one. 612 Pro, 712 Pro, I both put in C tier. 701, 702, I put in D tier, and that's probably where I'd put the 7XX also. 
Yeah, so I have actually heard the 7XX, but it's been so long and that I don't really remember it, so I don't think it's fair for me to judge it. Yeah, they, I mean, they were good for their time. The thing is, is that they're not really as functionally relevant today because headphones have gotten a lot better. Now we're on to Odyssey, and the first one on the list is the MM100, and I think you're the only one who's heard that one, DMS. No, oh, I've had this one. Yeah, and I put that in uh, a B tier. Oh, oh Cameron's okay. heard that also, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I put that in B tier. It's like alternate Sundara, basically. Um, I mean, both of them measure good, but it's it's very much just like the inverse of Sundara in the treble. It's got more like of that 2 to 3 kilohertz and less of the treble above that. So like, like Sundara with more ear gain and less brightness. You're like Sundar with more ear gain and less brightness. I, I'll take that as a compliment, sure. <laughs> yeah, I felt I felt pretty similar to it. Um, in comparison to the MM500, I think I like the tuning of the MM100 more, but the MM500 is quite a bit more technical. So overall, I ended up in a B for that one. Okay. Moving on, um, LCD1. I give this one a B tier with a tone grade of B and a subjective grade of C. Uh, C tier. Haven't heard this one. LCD GX. I also gave it a B tier with just Bs across the board. C tier for me. I went one lower. I went C just because the tonality, uh, the tuning was not quite there for me. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be angry that's to fair. B, but I, I think C. Yeah, I think that that's also fair. I, I, would, I was waffling between B and C rather than that one. Uh, LCD 2C. Now this is where we get to fight. I put this one... What, is 2C too classic? It is so, too classic. Too classic. Yeah. Too classic, yeah. Um... With stock pads, it's a C. I think that it, it with again with pad swaps, it can go way higher. But with stock pads, it is a C. I haven't heard uh, this. I haven't heard anything here until the LCD four. So you'll have to take it. Oh, okay, gotcha. So for me, actually, I thought we were going to disagree more on this. I also gave the LCD two classic a C, uh, with a tone grade of B and a technical grade of C. Uh, don't worry, we'll get to um, fight at some point. Yeah, we will. We will. Uh, <laughs> LCD two F. Uh, this one, I give it a B with a tone grade of C and a subjective grade of A. I also gave this a B. Wow, we're right on the money. Okay. LCD 3F. Where's the spice? I gave this one... <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, LCD 3F. I gave this a B with a tone grade of B and a subjective grade of A. I gave this one an A just because it's, it's like... It is expensive, but it is slightly better than the 2F, and something about it's pretty magic. Yeah, I would agree that it is it is better than the 2F. It's just it wasn't enough better for me that I would kick it into the next tier. That's fair. It's definitely like a low A for me. LCD2 closed. This one, I give it a C with a tone grade of D and a subjective grade of B. I put that in D tier. It's pretty weird. I could, I could see going D as well. <laughs> I, I love a good closed back. But it has to really be there tonally for me to like it. Uh, LCD 4. I give this one an A with a tone grade of C and a subjective grade of S. Oh, interesting. I put that in B tier. It it was very technical, but the tuning was too much for me. I put that in B as well. Similar kind of reasons. Really technical. The tuning, I, was, I didn't hate it. I thought it was a bit too dark for my liking, but not too far. Actually, the reason why I bumped it down from an A to a B purely because of the unit variation, which was really quite bad on that. I've heard two different pairs, which yeah. sounded almost like different headphones, and so that alone means that it's a bit tougher to recommend. Yeah, so I think you and I, I think we're actually all completely aligned on that, because the only reason I put it in A is because if you got a good unit, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the tonality actually was would be quite a bit better. Yeah. Um, so I've heard some where the tonality was much better, and then there was one that I got in not that long ago where I was like, yeah, no, it's back to uh, <laughs> the really dark tuning. So, yep. LCD X. Uh, now, we're, this one we're assuming is the 2021 because the yep. pre and, and beyond because the previous memory foam versions were completely bonkers. So, 2021 and forward, um, I gave this a B uh, with a tone grade of B and a subjective grade of A. Yeah, I give it a very solid B tier. 
I'm putting this one a solid B, but I would add the asterisk that this is one of the very few headphones that I'm ranking it like that with consideration of EQ involved. If I can't use EQ, which I'm allowing this one because Odyssey has their own reveal presets built into Rune, they've got their own software and stuff, so it's kind of part of the package a bit more than other headphones. If I didn't have that, I would rank it a C, maybe even a D, just because the vocals are too weird for me. With that EQ... That I could see that, because... Yeah, so like this is where I also struggled, because I... I could see grading the tone uh, C as well, but it is still better than some of the other ones that are in C. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for the that's tonality. true. It's a little so, tricky to evaluate this one. I, I think B is a yeah. good spot for it, though. These are also super easy to drive, which is nice. One of the few planars yeah. you can like yeah. really comfortably run portably. How do you guys feel about the LCD XC? I don't care for it too much, but I know this is one of those ones where I know that enough people have liked the technical features of it that I put it in B. I went one lower to C just because it wasn't close enough to the open X for me to put it in the same rank, but it's I didn't hate it. Yeah, one of the weird things is that this is one of the better measuring ones from Odyssey, like for just I guess all across the board. Um the the issue with it is you if you don't get a seal you lose all the bass and low frequency uh information. Right. And I I found it not the easiest thing to get it to couple perfectly the way that it needed to. So uh, for me, I gave it a B uh, with a tone grade of B. If you could get it to seal, it would probably be a C or a D otherwise. Um, and a, a subjective grade of A. MM500. Uh, well, MX4 we haven't heard, right? No. Uh, no. Yeah, I haven't heard the MX4. Um, so MM500 is the next one. How do you guys rate that? For me... MM500 is easily an A tier. The problem is is that it's not comfortable for me, but since we're not really counting comfort and we're just talking sound, I think that it's an easy A tier because it's very technical. It's pretty linear in its frequency response. As far as it's being a reference headphone, it's very close to the target for sound ID reference already out of the box, which is nice. So it, it pretty much meets its intended goal really well. Uh, yeah, very similar thoughts. It's easy A tier. Tuning's great. Technicalities are great. It's built really nicely as well. I don't have the same comfort issues. They were quite comfy on me, so easy A. I also gave it an A. Uh, tone grade of... Pardon me. I gave it an A. Tone grade of B and subjective grade of A. So if it's in A tier for me, it is in low A tier uh, because it's... it. The tuning is definitely still not quite right for me. Um, it's still got too much ear gain relative to the treble or too much up like lower treble uh, relative to the mid and upper treble and um, right. oh, keep in mind too what it's intended I, for also in the target they're going for yep I can see basically I can see why they did what they did and I do prefer it's tuning over the LCD 5 uh, which is the next one so LCD 5 um, I give this one an A and this is where we might fight because yeah. tone for me was C uh, but subjective is S um, I ended up putting it in B tier so not very far off it's just another case of I feel like it didn't have a significant technical advantage over the MM500, but I didn't like the tuning as much as MM500. So it just, for me, it, between the two, I'd recommend the MM500 over it, and that puts the LCD5 one tier below it. I think it is easier to recommend the MM500. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I went one tier lower with the LCD5 just because of the fact that I actually found it a bit shouty in certain instances. And I also found that Definitely. it just didn't have much stage for me, which I am a bit of a fan of. And so I just found it, uh, a lot of people are going to hate me for this, but pretty boring. So I, I just put it in C. Fair enough. That's that's the first one where we all had a different grade for mm. it, I think. <laughs> similar feelings to different extents. Yeah. Yeah. Like, actually, the reasoning is pretty similar there for both, for all three of us. Um, mm -hmm. So now we're on to the carbon. I gave this one a C. Oh, see, I put it one tier higher than that in B. Um, mostly, honestly, I just I find that similar to a lot of stacks, but better than certain stacks I've heard. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. So, B yeah. tier. I, uh, I put that in C purely because whilst the base on the carbon is some of the best on an E stat I've heard, it just does that better than most stacks I've tried, even things like the X9000, it wasn't as technically performant as a lot of the other stacks headphones, and it felt too much like it was kind of an E stat trying to sound like a planar and ending up not really with the, the advantages of either um, 
And so whilst I didn't dislike it at all, I also didn't really have anything about it which really drew me in, so I put it in C. I also put it in C, and um, I found the tonality to be very similar to the to the LCD-5, so I yeah. found it shouty. Uh, and then also, f- yeah, same thing for the subjective qualities. Cool for an e to do what it did, but um, certainly not on the level of other e that I've heard for the subjective qualities. Yeah. Uh, EL8C, I don't, I haven't heard this one. Haven't heard this one. Uh, it's just a really comfortable D tier. That's all I can say <laughs> okay. about it. It's just a really comfortable D tier. It's not a comfortable headphone to wear on your head. I'm saying it comfortably fits into the D tier sound wise. I think that's all the Odysseys, yeah? Yep. Uh, yes. Uh, all the ones that I have on this list. There are, of course, other Odysseys. Yes. Austrian audio next. Uh, Audio Technica, actually. Oh, Audio Technica. Audio Technica is next alphabetically, yeah. Audio Technica R70X is the first one for Audio Technica. How did you guys rank this one? A low B. I've not heard the R70X, so I didn't rank that one. Uh, I also gave it a B. I gave it a tone grade of A and a subjective grade of C. There you go. Uh, M50X. D. D. D? Yeah. D. Yeah. Yeah, I also gave it a D. This is one of those headphones which seemed to kind of get recommended by a couple YouTubers. Then people would buy it and then recommend it to other people without trying anything else. And so it ended up becoming really popular, even though there were way better options available. Yep. So this is a weird one because I struggled with the tone grade. I didn't... I almost... I gave it a D for the tone grade. I almost don't feel that's fair because for the coarse-grained kind of like general sound signature, it's not terrible. It's, but the issue is that for some of the fine grain stuff, it is it is terrible. So at least I found it to be. Uh, and then the way that the bass is handled is just not good. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So ultimately, yeah, I also gave it a D with a subjective grade of C. I wonder if I should switch that. Yeah, I'll switch that. Subjective grade of D and a and a tonality grade of C. Because again, for the general sound signature, you can get worse. M40X. I went one higher. I ranked that a C. Okay. I put M40X in the C tier. I still don't love it, but it is a little better than M50. Yeah, same for me. One tier higher. Still not a great headphone, but less terrible. I also haven't heard the M40X in nearly long enough time, so I can't, I don't feel it's a fair assessment on my part. Um, ADX 5000. I gave this one a B with a tone grade of B and a subjective grade of A. Um, yeah, for me, I put this one in C tier. It was technical, but it was just too bright for me. Yep, yeah, I, kind of I would go C as well. Just same reasoning. Uh, it's a little bit too bright and otherwise very good. Stage is nicely as well, but uh, just a bit too bright. Yep. I'm thinking for the uh, the people like uh, like Blaine, you know, who, who, who want you know their headphones to be, you know, blindingly bright well as we uh, discovered blaine point. has anti-sibilance built in so he's lucky oh yeah <laughs> yeah you know, that's what i'm saying you know some people you know that that brightness is just not uh, not an issue um i'm gonna uh, defer judgment on all the rest of these audio technicas because i it's been way too long <laughs> same for me dms take it away um the entire ad whatever x line i put in c tier I mean, some of them are decent. I think the 8500X is a great value because it's like 60 or 70 bucks for a decent open back headphone. A lot of people seem to like the 2000X more than the 1000X. It's a little bit warmer. The 1000X has a bit of a treble spike. 700, 900 are okay. Either way, they're pretty much all C tier. Uh, Austrian audio. Uh, high X55. How did this happen? Okay. <laughs> I uh, haven't heard it, so... I've okay. only heard the composer, so I can't comment on the uh, 55065. Do yourself a quick favor, open a tab, and look up the frequency response of the X55. All right, one sec. Let's have a look. Looking at Oratory's data. Jesus! That is a literal mountain. Like, it's like a mountain range. Yes, it is very much inspired by mountains you could find in Austria. That's why they call it Austrian audio. For Oh, it makes so much sense. I love it. This is yeah, a truly but okay. W-shaped headphone. Holy crap. It's an abomination. <laughs> that is um, 
No, no, this, no, 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 hold on, I gotta, it's, you know when people talk about they want the cat ear headphones? That's what this yeah. is. Yeah. Oh my god. Cat ears and frequency response. That's, yeah, um, that thing is a, that's a dumpster fire. So, but this was their first, was this their first headphone? Or is this? Uh, it was one of their early ones. So how's the, the high 6.5, X6.5? 6.5 is notably better, like considerably better. Um, okay. It's still not incredible, but it's it's easily a C tier. It's a lot like the Shure 1840, but better in some ways. I know the 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 build quality and the comfort is supposed to be really good with those. So I'm yes, it is. How do you guys feel about the composer? I uh, put that in an A, but I'm putting an asterisk on it that apparently some people are saying the release version is a bit more bass light than the one they were showing off at CanJam. If that's true, that might knock it down to a B. They're sending one for review though, so we'll find out soon. Oh, very cool. So A for now. I would do the same asterisk. Asterisk? Did I, why did I just say that? I would do the same uh, as Cameron. A contingent on it being the same sound as what we heard at CanJam. It's basically, tuning-wise, a dynamic version of an Aria. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's pretty close. All right. I want to hear that one now. Built beautifully um, as well. Really nice. Yeah, very right. beautiful build. Um, Beats. Beats Pro. I also abstain from this one. These are very easily in the how did this happen to you. It's, um, it is just Wait, is the, Are those That's the on-ears? They are, no, they're over-ear. They're over-ear, except for okay. the fact that they press in really hard against your ear, so after about an hour of wearing them, they really hurt. And it is just bass. Okay. It is just bass and nothing else. So, uh, okay. easy how did this happen. So it's appropriately named, at least. Yeah. Bayer Dynamic. Yeah, Bayer Dynamic, I started with a DT770. Uh, I give this one a B with a tone grade of B and a subjective grade of B. Yeah, I would say that it's between C and B for me. I put it in C. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I it's a low B for me. High C. I uh, wouldn't put it in B. I think there's some other headphones in B which are just too much better than that to uh, to keep, keep it there. But yeah, C. DT880. I give this one a C with a tone grade of C and a subjective grade of B. I also put that in C. C for me. DT990. I give this one a D with a tone grade of D and a subjective grade of B. Wow, that's generous. That's really generous. I just put that in a straight F. Yeah, so I was thinking there might be people out there who, again, they have the either the anti sibilance uh, or they <laughs> have, you know, like, you know how like people lose their hearing as they get older? Hmm. I'm thinking. So they have there the anti sibilance and the anti mud? But as far as the subjective characteristics, I, I don't, I didn't have any issues. It wasn't like super blunted sounding, or you know, it didn't. It has a good sound stage, so I gave it a B for the for the subjective qualities. But it's a it's a bad headphone. It was actually a bit painful, I'll be yeah. honest. Yeah, it's not just that the 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 treble peaks are enormous. It's that you have certain harmonic imbalances in the treble as well. So it just kind of ruins everything. I would agree that the DT nine ninety does ruin everything. That's the title. DT990 ruins everything. Yes. Uh, Amaron Home. Uh, I gave this one a C with a tone grade of C and a subjective grade of B. I just flat across the board D tier for me. Haven't heard this one. The funny thing about the Amaron Home is I would actually rate it worse for subjective than the other DT series, uh, slightly. But... Um, I heard two units, and one of them actually sounded okay. <laughs> um, That's odd for me. So it might be that they also have. Usually, they're really consistent, aren't they? In terms of their variants. No, actually, no. Unfortunately, they're not. Oh. I had a whole stack of Bayer Dynamics, right? And so I bought, I want to say, like eight different Bayer Dynamic headphones with multiple units of the same one, and found that it's it's a crapshoot. Like the, oh, the okay. unit variation on those is pretty darn extreme as well. Um, That's surprising, especially for a pro. So, I mean, Sennheiser's, like, everything's the same. You can't get unit variants a lot of the time on those, but... Well, okay, on the HD. Well, we, we'll get there. There, yeah, there is still we'll some there, unit we'll variation with yeah, Sennheiser yeah. as well with the 6 Series. It might, it might just be down to the pads that they're using. Tiger 300R. This one stages really big and then does not much else that well, so I put it in a C. Another one that also has unit variation issues that I found... Um, or at least, actually, it might not be unit variation. I actually think it's like they changed manufacturing runs and then something else happened. Um, oh, okay. Because 
The one that I reviewed actually had a lot of that mid-base mud. It didn't have nearly the kind of sibilance that the DT990 has, but um, it still had a lot of the mud. So for me, it was C and then tone grade C and subjective B. I put that one in C tier. Uh, DT700. Now this is where we might fight. Maybe. Uh, that one I put in C. I have it in C as well. Wow, I have it in C as well. Okay. Oh, okay. We hey, on this one. We're all getting along. For me, it's a C across the board. Tone and subjective is C. Yeah, uh, yeah I'd say yeah. the same. I'm happy with that. Uh, DT900. D. These are the Pro X, I should clarify. <laughs> Straight to D for me. Same. I put it in C tier. I don't I don't dislike it more than the DT700. I, I find them both equal. Um, I went tone grade B and subjective D because I actually found the 900s to be particularly blunted sounding like that was a yeah that's like you know, people are like what is this blunted character it's like that that thing is blunted <laughs> not particularly uh, engaging and fun yeah uh t1 gen 3 how the how did this happen this happen did you just say s oh f i thought you said s yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i would walk three thousand miles to slap you i would encourage that uh yeah, okay, so you guys have have it in how did this happen? How did this I happen? have it in yep. F. The third gen is if you took the Harmon target and inverted it. It's only like there's no deep okay. bass, it's only like super low mids. And then all the treble is like if you took ear gain and reversed it. T five P. This one for me is F's across the board. How did this happen? Haven't heard this one. Sounds like I'm not missing out though. So this one was one of the first closed back bear dynamics that I heard, and I thought, how is this how? But it's not it's not like it's so bonkers that I would like there are other ones for me that are in how did this happen? <laughs> uh that yeah. It doesn't quite make the grade there. How how about you, DMS? It still made it into how did this happen for me, but I agree that there are closed backs on this list that are worse. Yeah, yeah. DT seventeen seventy. I haven't uh heard this one. I think you could put this in the same category as the one from mass drop right like the 17 x they're a little bit different like uh they oh, had yeah, different okay. pads um but the 1770 i would put an f okay um cameron i haven't had this one just imagine if you took the dt 770 and added a lot more v-shape to it right that'll uh that'll fix it man we we are the Bayer Dynamic ones are not doing well for us here, guys. Um, no. All right, so DT1990. That, that's another one which is like, they get recommended all the time. A lot of the time, unfortunately, by people who haven't actually tried any alternatives. And so it's just a self-repeating cycle. Yeah. I think they're like the Reddit the Reddit darlings, right? Like the like some of them are. Yeah, Reddit, streaming, podcasting, Gaming, everyone's yeah. just got those. So everyone goes, oh, well, everyone's using them, so they must be good. Yeah. But yep. they're not. Um, they're not even good for so gaming. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not the, the judge of that. For me, this one is a D with a tone grade of F yep. that is completely unlistenable uh, with the 8.5K and 12K peaks. Um, if not for those, it would be all right, I think. And so for the subjective, I gave it a B. Yeah, I put that in D as well. It's just way too peaky for me. I couldn't listen for more than a couple minutes. Yeah, D, D tier also for me. Really? I thought you liked that one more. Uh, at its time, I did. But that was also, you know, six years ago. Right. So. Before you... It's not terrible, before... but I... And it depends on which pads, because there's two sets of pads that come with it. The A pads, I didn't like as much as the B pads. Um, right. But I'd still say, in the modern era, I'd put it in D. Okay. Yeah, one of them makes it a little bit more V-shaped, right? Yeah. Well, one of them adds bass to it, which kind of offsets the treble some. Um, okay, so now we're on to Dan Clark Audio. Um, yeah. So this is the mass drop versions that are currently being produced. I don't know that they're actually making the Aeon Opens without the X. I could be wrong about that. Right. But I've not heard the Dan Clark ones until we get to Expanse. So we'll okay, see okay. Until then. Um, for me, d the Open X is a D with a tone grade of C. Um, and then a subjective grade of D. It is a blunty boy. What about you, DMS? I put that one in C, just mostly because there are things that I feel like it's better than that are in D. Fair. 
yeah like if i'm not paying super close attention to the fine you know details of the music of, of a particular particular track um mm -hmm. yeah i could jam with it you know it's not like it's super unpalatable or anything like that it's just that if you start to pay attention to that stuff you realize this is not this ain't it um aeon closed x uh i thought this one was pretty good i gave it a b yeah with a tone grade of a and a subjective grade of c i also gave that one a b that's a pretty solid value too yeah um aeon 2 noir we'll fight on this one because for me this is a very easy a because there's so there's so many closed backs out there that just straight up suck and this one is one that i would describe as in almost every technical facet an exceptional closed back but it does lack on dynamics and i think that dynamics is the only thing stopping it from going into a higher tier than that but for me it has to sit at a tier uh for me it's a b tier um tone grade a um subjective b i think that uh yeah, I'd probably put it in high B, just because I do yeah. think it is better than the closed X, but not by much. Like, it's pretty darn similar. They're within a margin of... Our, our yeah. rankings are within a margin of each other. Yeah. I think probably for similar assessments as well. Uh, Ether 2. What do you think of this one? Uh, D. It just it didn't do anything for me, but it also wasn't terrible. Yeah, D for me as well. Uh, tone grade D. It's very dark. Uh, and then the... Uh, technical or subjective grade I gave it B because it does have a reasonably wide presentation or spacious kind of sound ether closed now okay here's a question for you what's the difference between the closed and the C flow uh, basically like the magnet structure and then the damping so right but as far as how we're ranking these are we ranking this, them as the same or are we saying they're two different I would say they're two different things because the the C flow is notably less damped and notably more dynamic than the uh, regular ether closed is. For me, I still put both of them in B tier, but I would put the C flow as a high B and the closed the regular ether closed as a low B. For whatever one it is that I spent time with, because <laughs> it wasn't the master up one, it was the one one of the official ones from from DCA. Um, right. I get. I thought that was also pretty good for its tuning like the i would give it a b as well and the subjective quality that's closer to the closed and not the c flow yes okay okay but i do feel like the c flow was just like a refinement of that basically gotcha um expanse well i mean we know how i feel about this one <laughs> um that one's a d for me D okay, Cameron. Yep. I went one higher. I put it in C. I I thought that they they fixed a lot of the issues, particularly the dynamics on the stealth, but seemed to sacrifice too much. Oh, I had sorry, I have a hiccup to be bad. I'm not going to do that again. Uh, <laughs> That's going in. There. I I put that. <laughs> God, God damn it! Whilst they fixed a lot of the issues that I had in the stealth, particularly the dynamics, it was uh, just a lot punchier. They gave up too much else. It wasn't as detailed as the stealth. The tuning I didn't think was quite as good. Um. So I went and see. Yeah, I went D uh, with a tone grade of C. So subjectively, the sound signature was actually a lot worse than C. I would put the tone grade in F. But if it performs the way that I imagine it should perform on people's heads, like the intended tuning, let's say, I think it would be higher. So I had to kind of put right. it in the middle with C. Um, and uh, so for whatever reason, the whole... Um, waveguide thing doesn't work for me um i i, I assume yeah, we should probably clarify on that because obviously people will say oh but, but it's tuned yeah. to harmon perfectly and stuff the issue isn't that it's the point that it's not when you put it on your head a lot of people's actual heads the in situ performance is quite different to what you see when you put it on a graph yeah rig, and, that's and so the yeah. headphone transfer function is is quite strong. variable the effect of it is quite yeah. strong yeah with this yeah which also might mean that a lot of people are going to really love it for those same reasons uh but it's just, well with that said yeah. i also i gave the subjective also a d because it sounds like it has negative sound stage it sounds like i'm inside out i didn't like that <laughs> somehow oh, okay that's interesting i didn't get that i thought that it staged pretty deep. not as well as other open it didn't sound like a open headphone but i thought it staged right. decently well it could also be because of the hptf effects yeah, oh, almost certainly, yeah. Stealth. 
Uh, I went a little higher with this one. I gave this a B uh, with a tone grade of B and a subjective grade of B. Yep, B tier. Yep. Yep, same for me. Uh, th- it's The stealth for me was the most... That's a headphone. It's doing nothing really wrong. It's doing nothing sort of outstanding. It's just... It's just, just that. It just but how is. could you? It B. matches the Harmon target so perfectly. How could you grade it a B? <laughs> yeah, maybe it does. I don't know how it does on my head, yeah. but it's. Uh, it wasn't exciting, but I also uh, for a close back. I think it's the best close back I've heard probably. Best close. Back. Unless you're counting the more sort of esoteric tunings, but. But it is up there. I'd say yeah. It's certainly a lot better than the Expanse for me. Like I might take a. Well, we'll talk about ZMF in a bit, but yeah. if you're talking sort of neutralist tuning for me it's the yeah, most close right. back gotcha uh, Voce I this is X for me because I have not spent time with it yeah I put that in uh, F uh, how did this happen for me I, that was I really did not like that headphone at all which okay. uh, made me surprised for the next one Karina because I put that in an A that was like complete opposite end of the spectrum for me from the Voce yeah, I also put Karina in the A tier. That one is really solid. It's like one of the better E stats I've heard. Mm. There's an E stat that does bass. It's detailed. It's tuned well. It's built beautifully. There's not really much I can complain about. Yeah. Now I want to try that one. Get that in. Future DMS here. This is after we filmed the tier list video. Now I've covered DCA E3, which wasn't out at the time we were originally filming this video. This is like the noir, but endgame. And if the Noir is A tier, then I personally have to put this in S. It's the best closed back headphone that I have ever heard by a massive margin. In fact, it's also better than most open back headphones. Okay, back to when we filmed things. I think we're down to, we're on to uh, Denon now. The yep. AHD 9200. How did you guys grade that one? Uh, C tier. C for me. C for me as well. Uh, with a tone grade of D and a subjective grade of A. Um, D7200. Haven't heard it. Haven't heard that one. Haven't heard it. D1001 slash uh, Creative Ravana Live slash EMU Purple Heart. <laughs> C tier. It's a very good C tier. Yeah. Yeah, high C tier. Especially the Creative Ravana Live just because for the value for money it's uh, really quite compelling. I think Purple Hearts are like 80 bucks as well, right? Yeah, it's at that Something price like that, point yeah. it's pretty hard to argue against. It's not, you know, an amazing headphone, but for that much money, it's an excellent choice. Yeah. I uh, I also gave it C, uh, tone of B and uh, subjective C. Uh, D5200. I haven't heard this one. I haven't heard that one either. I haven't heard it. I ha- I've heard, like, the old, like, before they went to the, the 200 series, like, so 5,000 and 7,000 and 2,000, mm-hmm. but not the new ones. Um, so, yeah. Final audio. Uh... I know there are a bunch of Final Audio headphones, but the only one that I put on this list uh, that everyone's heard w- was the D8000 Pro. Yep. Um, and I gave this an A with a tone of B and a subjective of S. Yeah, I also gave this an A tier. I put it in A. I was really tempted to put it in S because I love them a lot. The limited edition especially. I know it's, it's not supposed to sound different, but it absolutely does. I've tried them both side by side. The reason I didn't quite could put it, it in an S. Could it be in a variation? Uh, it could be, but one of them went like 6 or something dB louder before clipping. So it did definitely mm. seem to be something different. Um, okay. But the reason I put it in A rather than S is just because the comfort is such that I can only wear them for an hour or so. And whilst normally I'm not ranking comfort, that level of uh, not being able to wear them for long, I, I had to knock it down a tier. Well, if you can't listen to them, you know, then, then yeah. that has an effect on the sound quality. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, it doesn't sound great sitting on the desk, so. Focal. Focal Elegia. How'd you guys rank this one? Um, C. I gotta find it, because we're in slightly different orders. For me, Elegia was a C tier. Yep, C for me as well. C for me as well. I gave it a tone of D and a subjective of B. There you go. Elear. Elear, I did not like. That was like the first air quote, dark bright quote headphone that I had ever encountered. And it just reminds me of like if the Nighthawk was technical. So I do not like the Elear. For me, it is a D tier. Same for me. Uh, similar kind of thoughts. It was 
weirdly boxy but etchy at the same time I, I just didn't get on with that one D tier for me so I went C tier tone of C and subjective of A and the reason is because when you swap out the pads and I know we're not we're not ranking based on pad swaps but that's why you know for me the sub subjective was higher it does the dynamics thing very well fair enough uh, and then moving to the next one the Alex I ranked as a B with a tone of B and a subjective also of A I put that one A. I know that it's the Allier with different pads, but it is notably better tuned than the Allier because of that. I never had a problem with the technical capability of the Allier. It was always the tuning, so the Alex for me is an easy A tier. Same for me. Uh, I had an Alex for a bit, A tier easily. Uh, they, that, that's probably my favorite focal behind the Utopia. Interesting. Um, next we have the Clear, which I gave a B with a tone grid of B and a subjective of A. And I basically felt the Alex and the clear are so close to one another. And like, I have a preference for the clear as well, but it's not enough to where it puts it in a separate category. Mm. Yeah, I feel similarly about them, but the, the clear I put in A tier as well as the Alex. I yep. put the clear That's in fair. B just because I had a fairly strong preference for the Alex over the clear. So I had to put that one one tier lower. You, fair. you know what's interesting is there's another, there is another ad advantage to the Allier platform sorry Alex right or Lear with alternate pads um, and it's the higher impedance meaning it is a little bit uh, more flexible with the sources that you want to run That's so true. if you want to mm -hmm. run like I mean yeah like anytime you run it off of anything that has high output impedance you are going to reduce the volume threshold before it clips and people do that and they're like oh it clips but it's like actually because of the higher output impedance thing right um, but with the Lear slash Alex you have a bit more headroom um, than you do with the clear because it has higher impedance. Clear MG. That is a C for me. Okay. I uh, I put that one in D simply because there's a resonance or something at 18 kilohertz, which just fatigued me Whoa. a lot. Mr. That's... I can hear 18 kilohertz over well, here. Well, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it because there, there's going to be a lot of people. If you're over 30, it's not going to be a problem. So that's uh, <laughs> that's specifically for kind of, you know, younger yeah. purchases. So. I have a few months until I'm 30, so I I, I can start enjoying the clear. Yeah, it, and it immediately shuts off as soon as you <laughs> yeah, turn 30. That's it. In, in like a few months, I can start enjoying the clear MG, but right now, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, for me, I, I also went C. I went with a tone grade of C and a subjective grade of B. Celesti. That's a B tier for me. Yeah, B tier for me as well. I kind of liked it similar amounts to the clear. The tuning's not quite as uh, realistic, but it was really enjoyable. And uh, yeah, B tier for me. B tier for me as well. B's across the board. Uh, Radiance. Also B. Yeah, I gave this one an A actually because, it, well, for me, this was the close back that I enjoyed the most with a tone grade of A and a subjective of B. But um, the, the thing that is there, there is also some... Yeah, I'm not sure if it's unit variation or pad variation that because I've found some units where there was a much stronger base hump than the one that I liked the best. So gotcha. <laughs> take that with an asterisk. Well, here's the thing: I like the radiance more than I like a lot of other closebacks, but ranking it just on the sound quality, it ends up being a B for me, even though it's one of my favorite closebacks for other reasons like build and comfort yep. and all that. That's fair, Cameron. A uh, B. Uh, Stelia. I had that one in a C. The tuning was just a little bit too off the mark. I, I didn't quite get on with it, but I, well, no, actually that's not true. The first track I played on it, I can't remember what it was. I thought, oh, this is fantastic. And then I swapped to something else and it didn't quite work. So depends on what you're listening to, but not quite as all rounder capable for me. So I put it C. Uh, yeah, for me, similar kind of feeling, but I just was a little bit farther down the rabbit hole. So for me, it was a D tier. Uh, for me, it's a B. Um, interesting, the split here. Uh, with a with a tone grade of C and a subjective grade of A, I found it to be very very subjectively interesting. But there are more tuning quirks there than any of the other focal close backs, except for the Elysia. Hmm. Hmm. Utopia. Uh, before we rank them, wait. Before we rank them, which of the two do you guys just prefer, and why? From the new Utopia versus the old Utopia. Oh. For me, it's a very, very strong preference towards Utopia 2 because Utopia 1 hit something in the treble that was just like, it made me wince oh, okay. constantly. I'm a clear preference. F I wouldn't say clear preference. I, I have a mild preference for Utopia 1 
uh, because I never found any issues with the uh, treble peaks. But the other thing is none of the units that I reviewed had massive treble either. So I don't really know what's going on there. I uh, I can't decide which one I like more. I liked the old Utopia because it was a little bit more different and kind of its own thing and a little bit over the top sounding. So it was great if you had other headphones you could go to, but the Utopia 2 I thought was a much better all-rounder. But I couldn't pick right. between them in terms of... I think that that makes the most sense. Yeah, that's kind of how I would... Yeah. I'd pick the old Topia if you have a collection of headphones already. I'd pick the new Topia if you were getting it as your main headphone. So for me, with so Utopia 1, I ranked it as an S with a tone grade of A and subjective of S. And then Utopia 2, I ranked as an A with a tone grade of A and a subjective of S. So they're close, but just one slightly behind the other. You know, funny enough, I also ranked Utopia 2 as an A, but I put Utopia original as a B just because of what it, it yep. does for me personally in the trouble. I Makes put sense. them both in an A. I would have put the original Utopia in an S if it had slightly better sub bass extension or if we were factoring an EQ in part of this, but we're not. So I'm putting both of them in a very high A. I think that they're better than some of the other headphones in A, but not quite yep. high enough to go in S. On to Fostex. Oh boy. T50 RP. Uh, C tier. C for me, yeah. I couldn't sort of... Couldn't quite get along with it as my main headphone, but it's uh, it's not bad. C for me as well. C's across the board. Uh, yep. TRX00 Ebony. D. D. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Same for you, Cameron? Yeah, yeah same for me. I went C. C's across the board. T60 RP. That's a C tier for me, but it's a higher C tier than the original T50. It's got different pads that are a bit deeper, more comfortable, and do some slightly better things, but it's still in the C tier. Yeah, I'd agree with that as well. I put it in C as well. I haven't heard the T60 RP, so I'll abstain. And same with the TH900 and TH909, so up to you guys where you want to rank those. I put both of those in D tier. Uh, I put both of them in D. Interesting. I would put the asterisk, though, that I would actually kind of like to own one just because there are some tracks which are just super slammy, which these headphones are really fun mm. with. But, oh my god, That's they're really true. sharp and peaky as well, so I uh, couldn't listen to them very long. Uh, on to Gold Planar. GL2000. Um, I rated this as a D with a tone grade of D and a subjective grade of C. Uh, I put both of the Gold Planar headphones in F. <laughs> I can see why. When, when have you ever, outside of the first month that they were hype trained, have you ever seen anyone ever again recommend a Gold Planar headphone? Because I haven't. Has Zeos even recommended it again? I don't think so. I think Zeos stopped because he uh, he really liked the one that he got sent, and then a friend of his who had bought one came over to his house, and he listened to that pair, and it was considerably worse, so he stopped recommending them after that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, they were not great. Um, the cup also fell off of the one that they sent me <laughs> <laughs> after a while. <laughs> Um, okay, next one is the AMT one, and I think it's like the GL850 or something like that. F again for me. Yeah. So interestingly with that one, I found the subjective qualities to be interesting. Um, so I actually give the subjective qualities a B, but the tuning was also odd, <laughs> I would say. Um, yeah. So it, it, it gets a low C for me. Oh, sorry, Cameron, did you hear the AMT one from... No, Google I've not. No. Okay. Um, yeah, so now we're on to Grado, and I'm just going to say all of these are in How Did This Happen For Me. I I just, I can't. I can't get into <laughs> any of the Grados. They're just peaky and horrible, and they fit horribly. So if people love Grados, don't listen to what I have to say. <laughs> so both of the, the ADX and the 225X, I both put in F, but the 325X I put in D, because the 325X had still some like trebliness going on but a lot less than every other grado i've ever had here and the hemp i also put in d just because i know how many people love the hemp the yeah. hemp i feel like isn't a bad headphone necessarily it's just ridiculously overpriced for the sound and the build quality and everything about it but it's not something yep. i'd hate listening to but i i did put that in d just because of the price 325x i've got in d and then the other two I've got an F, but would also be quite happy to put them in. How did this happen? Uh, no yeah. arguments from just knocking them down there. 
I think out of out of the Hemp 325X, SR80X, and 225X, the only one that I would bump up is probably the Hemp. I can see the argument for the 325X as well because they're very similar. But but with the with the requirement of different pads, you know that they the ones that don't yeah uh, feel oh, no, like the stock pads. The stock pads are the ones with less trouble on the 325. Oh, are they okay? Well, with the yeah. hemp, I was using. I found the, some Geek Rea pads. I just uh, I couldn't get into the the comfort of any of them without doing a pad mod. The the uh, hemp's build quality, in my view, was um, actually unacceptable. So yeah, <laughs> I think for all of them, just Grado just builds things. things like crap. The fact it is that what it the is. the AliExpress knockoffs you could get were considerably better built than the Grados was oh, no. a bit embarrassing. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. Uh I think we can move on to Harmonic Dime. Yeah. Uh, G200. Uh I g- I give this a B, which is weird because it's not technically good. Um in fact, the headphone itself is a has a severely flawed mechanical design um and the pads don't work for it at all. Uh but the so also the the tuning is a bit odd. I gave the tuning a C, uh, but the subjective uh, qualities I gave an A because this is essentially an LCD three. Um, I mean it's not an LCD three obviously. LCD three at home. Yeah, it's LCD three at home, and um, like to the point where this is that that driver from I believe it's fine, uh, where you know there was all that drama about um, you know they them ripping off the Odyssey driver, but the thing is. It still is a good driver, like, or still is a capable driver. So all the things yeah. about that LCD three driver, like low harmonic distortion, etc., that's it's all there. I put it in C's here. Okay, yeah. Uh, Zeus. B. B. B for me as well, with a tone grade of C and subjective of B. Poseidon. Uh, Poseidon D. D for me as well, and uh, with a tone grade of, okay. Tone grade of C and subjective of D. That's a blunty boy. Uh, Athena. I have not heard this one. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard this one. Uh, Helios. I gave it a C across the board. Yep, C. I gave it a C, but I've just got to shout out the fact that they have an S tier packaging for the price. It's like, what, $300 or something? And it comes in a comes with nice case. case with badge and everything, and the pads are so comfy, and it's... The headphones yeah. not necessarily built the best, but the packaging and everything is uh, better than a lot of multi kilobuck headphones. So I've got to say uh, thanks for doing yeah. that. Yeah, I I agree. And the uh, the yeah the quality of the pads is good. Like the material itself feels good. Really comfy. Uh, yeah. Head audio. So this hey. is a, this one we will probably disagree on. Probably. Headphone one. Let's start there. I put that in an A tier. A's across the board for me. I uh, I put that one in B. I've got to put another asterisk on this one. It didn't fit me, so my impressions of that are based on basically trying to force it and hold it on my ears because it only comes down to back here, <laughs> including the revised one. Oh, right. I've got a big head. That's something right. they fixed in the headphone too. So I put that one in a B, uh, but my listening experience was not necessarily the most representative. Yeah, there's there's a couple caveats with these. One is that they do need a bit of power as well. Uh, yeah, but they're not that easy to drive. Yeah. It, yeah, for the for, for the headphone one, there are also some driver mode issues for the frequency response. But if you look at like the overall kind of like coarse grained sound signature, it's really quite good. Um, the the weird thing is that measured on the Gross forty three AG, like with with the with the KB five thousand pinna, uh, there are certain feet like regions of the frequency response where just like no information shows up. So I don't know what's going on there, but I think it also had coupling issues similar to you, uh, Cameron. So uh, okay, uh, on the five and two eight, it uh, it shows it all properly, and um, yeah, uh, it was quite good. Headphone two, for me that was a C tier. Oh, I put that in A. I thought that they fixed. Well, it didn't have the resonance is- issues that I could hear in the headphone one. It's ridiculously technically capable. It's one of the most detailed non-E stats I've heard. The big two issues with it for me were that it's quite dark, which I don't necessarily dislike. Some people will. That's a preference thing. And the sub-bass roll-off. But the technical Mm. performance was so good. And the tuning was not bad and so easily fixable with EQ as well, which I know we're not supposed to be including that. But just the technical performance, I, I couldn't put it anywhere other than an A. 
Yeah, so that was the whole point, right? That they're trying to do is to fix some of the some of the resonances throughout the, uh, the 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 frequency response there, and the consequence of that is that it ended up being a much darker headphone, right? Mm. Uh, or I don't know, like much darker, but darker enough to where it's like you notice it. And yeah. um, so for me, I gave it a B with uh, the sound signature being a B as well, and then the uh, subjective qualities being an A. I could see the sound signature being a C, uh, but you know, Lorho gang represent right. <laughs> Uh, for for Lorho Gang, it's easily a B for the sound signature. <laughs> on onto Hi-Fi Man, uh, HE four hundred SE uh, slash HE X four. It's the same headphone. I sh- actually I should say it's not the same headphone, but it in practice is the same <laughs> because the tuning is the same. Yeah, I put that in C. Slightly different magnets, but yeah. I had it in C as well. I could see why you put it in C, and I, if for me it's a B, but it's a low B, right? I might still put this in C, but basically the tone grade I would give it a C. And the subjective grade, I'd give it a B. And the reason why the tone grade is a C for me is because it has that uh, particularly aggressive treble resonance that uh, I struggle with. But apart from that, it's it's pretty good for the price. Uh, Deva, HE5XX, same headphone. That was a D for me. I wanted it to be better so bad, especially for the wireless stuff. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere between C and D. Yeah, I gave it a C with a tone grade of B because it, it, the, the overall tuning's not bad. And then the subjective of C. Sundara. That was a solid B for me. S plus. S plus. No, <laughs> S plus. <laughs> uh, it was a solid B for me. And with a shout out that the value for money is great as well. I actually put that one in A tier, despite that one being a little bit bright for me. Interesting. That's like one of my favorite Hyphamans. And I think it's just a really, really good headphone. I gave it a B with a tone grade of A and a subjective grade of B. Uh, HE560. Uh, C. C for me as well. B's across the board for me. Um, Edition XS. I was so tempted to put this one in an A, but I ended up going with B. I also end up with B. I, I, it's, in some ways it's better than Sundara, but I just like Sundara more. And part of that's yep. comfort, uh, but also a good chunk of that is sound too. Something about Sundara is just better for me than Edition XS. It could be the mid-range, because of the it's a bit more the Sundara is doesn't have as much of a dip at around 1.5k could be um i gave it a b with b b across the board uh the advantage over the Sundara is that it doesn't have the bass roll off but i also agree that uh the mid-range tonality of the Sundara is better uh ananda nano i uh, put x for this one for me c tier i had it in c if it was just like a treble shelf down a bit, it would have been B, maybe even A. It's really good, but it's just very yeah. bright. Ananda Stealth. C tier. C tier. Why did they have to go and mess with it? It was it was good. Yeah. Stop changing things when they don't need to be changed. <laughs> I agree. C tier for me as well. The treble got messed up a bit with the stealth magnets unnecessarily. HE6 SEV2. I gave this an A, surprisingly. Um, and I'm if it's an A, it's a low A, but it's still an A for me, uh, with a tone grade of B and subjective of A. I put it in B. I c- couldn't quite uh, say I liked it more or less than like an addition XS, so I just put it in B. Yeah, it's a B tier for me. Fair. Uh, HE6. OG HE6, though. That's it, The HE6 SE and the OG HE6 are not the same headphone. A- a- OG HE6 is an S tier headphone for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm inclined to agree that OG HE6 is S tier, um, but there's an argument that tonally the HE6 SEV2 is better, just because um, the pads are the pads that come with it are not the like horrendous leather ones that cause the honk on the HE6. So like if we're being strict, like what came with the headphone, <laughs> you know, the tonality for the HE6 SEV2 is better. It's just that I put those pads on the original. So S tier for me for HE6. They're just so hard to get hold of though nowadays. Yeah, we have two. Anyway, that's the problem. <laughs> so yeah, we're hoarding them. Uh that is an A tier for me. Okay, now we're into the Arias. Aria V3. A tier. Solid A tier. This is where we're gonna disagree. B tier for me, with a tone grade of B and subjective of A. Uh Aria Organic. I also put that in A because it's basically just like what do you do you it's preference between yeah. those two arias. Yeah, it, uh, I put it in A as well. It's a more V-shaped aria. 
It's yep. Which one do you like? Yep. More. Yeah. Uh, I also put it in B, same as the RAV3. Uh, HE1000 V2. Uh, this one I gave it A across the board, uh, tonal and and uh, subjective. Uh, measures better than the aria and the treble. Uh, all the arias, it's it's smoother. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it was surprisingly good to me. I'll put it that way. I put it in B just because it did sound like a little bit smoothed over compared to the aria. Still an excellent headphone, but just I, I thought slightly less technically capable. Still good, but not this, quite the same tier. So I put it B. Yeah, I also put that in B. Uh, HE1000 Stealth, I haven't heard. I haven't heard the Stealth. Nothing. Okay. HE1000 SE. So this is the previous, like back when they released the V2s, they also had the SE. Um, so yeah. this is the one that's super bright. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I don't. HE1000 SE was the most technical of the whole HE1000 and Aria line for sure, but just too bright and picky and just not as enjoyable as the other ones that one was a c for me i put that in d yeah i put it in c and i agree with everything you said cameron it was d for tonality for me and subjective stuff was a all right we have a fun one coming up here the audivina oh joy <laughs> how did this happen i'm uh i'm just gonna summarize my thoughts if we can play a quick clip of my review of the audivina I agree. So Sandara closed. Oh yeah, those both. F. That was F, F tier. Yep. Yeah, it just didn't yep. work. Susvara. So um, that's a reluctant S for me. <laughs> Kicking and screaming into S tier. Oh, com comfortable yeah. S. For comfortable me. S for me as well. S across S. the board. It yeah. is an S tier headphone for a lot of people. It's one that I would never personally purchase. But I see why people like it. No, I get it. It's too normal for you. You gotta have a little I bit just, more character. I want something with less of the the agony. Um, but aside from that, it, it's pretty good. What There's part the of agony? it that's just... 7K? It's just... I don't get much agony from it. I don't get any agony. All right. Um, HER9. So this is the, the dynamic driver one? How did this happen? What the hell's going on? Absolute smoldering dumpster fire that someone is... I'm not. We shouldn't put this in the video. <laughs> uh, how did this happen? Uh, all right. Uh, HER10P is also yep. how did this happen for that me. one? Uh, interestingly, sounds better if you take the cups off. Uh, <laughs> still not great. H H yep. tier either way. How did this happen? But uh, does technically go up to an F if you take the cups off. Right. Uh, yeah, hi yeah. man. Make some of the some headphones like the Sesvara, and then they also make the closed yeah. box. It's like how... They, like, Sesvara is one of my favorite headphones. <laughs> possibly my favorite headphone in terms of what you can actually realistically get. Yeah. And then all their closed backs, I've not... None of them have done anything but yeah. scare me. Uh, something they got to figure out. Uh, okay, Shangri-La Jr. A tier for me. That was a C tier for me. Too bright. C tier, wow. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember that conversation. Yeah, so for me, it's actually an S tier. Um, with the tone of A and subjective of S. I do agree that it is a little bit too bright, uh, but among the category E stats, it's not really too bright. It's similarly bright to many of them. Yeah, that ones, was like so. DT990 comparable for me. Oh, God, no. No, no. This is a real headphone. Yeah, I, I would agree there is too much trouble for me yeah. as well. So. Uh, Shangri-La Senior. So this is interesting. It's the more expensive one. This one really depends on what you're running it on. Yeah, so I ranked it at an A with a tone of A and a subjective of S. I uh, I put it in A as well. I would say that if we're evaluating it solely on the official uh, Hyperman Energizer, it would go to like a B. Yeah. I really don't like that. Yeah. If you put it on something amazing like a Grand, Ca uh, Grand Cayman at Canjam, New York, there it sounded solid S tier. No. Overall, I'm putting it in an A just because it's so variable depending on what you run it on. It can easily be too lean. Yeah. But it also seems to be a little bit fixed depending on 
what you run it on. So. Yeah. Uh, DMS? Uh, if you're running it on something good, A tier. Uh, now we're on to COS. Porta Pro. Uh, Porta Pro? We're going to fight about these ones, aren't we? I gave the C across the board. So I originally put it in C, but I moved it to D because the KPH 30i is better. So I put KPH 30i in C and then right. Porta Pro in D. I have it in D, which sounds bad, but I actually really like them just because of, again, value for money is excellent. We're ranking things based on just sound quality here, but I they make me happy. Did I have it higher than you guys did? I think you might have done. Okay, I have to change that then because when we, t- we were talking about it, I didn't <laughs> like it as much as you guys did. I, I put it in D just because I don't think it's as good as a lot of the C-tier headphones, but it's, what, $30 or yeah, something? Yeah. And for that much money, it's yeah, and that's right. easy. Right? That's right. It was C-tier with the Axi pads and D-tier without yep. or something like yes. that. And we're going no pads. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, KSC 75. D. Similar thing. D-tier for me. I, I like them. They're great. I'm not saying they're bad. It's just it's $30, and it's not as good as a lot of the other ones we've got in C-tier. So. Clearly price biased. <laughs> I love them for what they cost, yeah. but they they just don't sound as good as a lot of the headphones in C tier, so I can't put them there. Yeah. Uh, KPH thirty i. Uh, I'm going to defer to you guys on this. Uh, depends on if you've soldered a really thick XLR cable into them, or if you're just running them normally or not. Uh, I put those in a C. <laughs> okay. Uh, DMS. Um, KPH thirty i. I put in a C. Ninety nine classics. From Meze. I gave it a D across the board. I'd agree with that. Solid D across the board. Built beautifully, but sound D. Yeah. D for 99, yeah. There was something with uh, the different pads. I imagine with the good pads, the tone score would be higher and the whole thing would be like a C. But with the ones that have like the monster base, which is the one that I think is currently going on. Yep. Um, or it was, you know, for the its longest lifespan, uh, it was definitely a D. What's next? Uh, 109 Pro. 109 Pro. Solid B. Yeah. Me as well. I'd say solid B. And B across the board for me. Yeah. All right, now we get into the fun stuff. All right. Empyrean 1. C tier. Same? Yeah. Yep. C tier for me. Hence why I couldn't put costs in uh, <laughs> no. C tier. Ah, um, okay, okay. They're just... They're built so nicely. They're so comfortable. But the resolute... Like, the detail retrieval is just not up to par with a Sundara... So, so I would actually say it's yeah. it, it is about on equivalent level with the Sundara, maybe even better for the resolution once you EQ it, but we're not doing EQ. So I Yeah, went, but we're not EQing yeah, it. Yeah, I went so. tonality D and subjective B. I quite like the tuning. It's 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 pretty warm, but I, I actually liked it. So but it's just not technical. It's the it's the warm bright. That for me is the warm bright. Like it has the right level of ear gain right. for me, but it's the distance between like the upper treble zing is just too dominant for me. Uh, Empyrean 1 is in C tier for me. All right, here, okay, is the fun one. Empyrean 2. I'll, uh, I'll bow out and watch you two guys fight. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I absolutely loved it. Josh loved it. Z didn't love it, and then he went to, I don't know, I think it was Capital Audio Fest and found out that his unit was actually broken, and he heard another one and loved it. And all three of us have thought that it sounds like a mini HE1. And I feel the same way. I cannot put it in anything other than S tier. Okay. So for me, I also thought it was good. I put it in S tier. Sorry, I put it in A tier and gave it A across the board. But, um, and this is where it gets interesting because I haven't evaluated your unit and you haven't evaluated my unit. Right, which we need to do. Uh, My unit also doesn't, there are no measurements of my unit on the 4128 and there's no measurements of your unit on the 5128. Right. So it's very difficult for us to compare apples to apples here um, and and know for sure that this is the sound here is the same and we're evaluating it like the same sound. Yep. Um, so I'm just going to say, I think, for for the unit that I evaluated, I would give it an A tier, which is still very good. Um, and that's not to say that there is unit variation. We don't know. Is, right. Is what I'm saying. It's a big unknown right but based now. Based on my assessment... That's right. There's too many variables. So based on my assessment, I gave it an A across the board. Uh, you know, tonality is not for me without EQ, but it is uh, it is competitive, uh, I think. And then for the subjective stuff, also A. What's next? Elite. 
C tier. I also put C tier. I put it as B just because I felt like it was a, a solid step up from the original Empyrean. So I, I kind of had to put it in B. The tuning's pretty similar, yeah. It's just more technical, basically. I'm I'm pretty excited to try Empyrean 2, though, based on what you guys have said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah with it basically, like, they... They just had the subjective, well, at least for the one that I evaluated, it was like the subjective characteristics of the elite, just with a significantly better tonality. So, look forward to that. Um, lyric. That one I put in a D tier, just because we know that there's notable unit variation, yeah. and the ones that I had, I got a good seal on, but they just sounded bad. Yeah, I had exactly the same experience. Uh very comfortable, built beautifully headphones. Just uh, sound signature and tuning was well off for me. Yeah. D tier. I put them in C tier because the one that I evaluated actually measured pretty close to an Aeon 2 Noir, <laughs> weirdly. Um, but uh, the unit variation thing is definitely an issue, so it's hard to know. So for me, it's a C tier. The one I had had a lot of mid-bass. Yeah. So. Yeah, the one I had, like, it has a pretty strong, like, 12K resonance that I wasn't too fond of. But, you know, the rest of the tuning was great. Uh, okay, Moondrop. Venus. C tier. I put that in a C. Really? Yeah. I, I went B. I've, it's just a brighter Sandara, I found. Yeah. Yeah, but the brighter being... Worse. A bad <laughs> yeah, Sandara already <laughs> leaned yeah, bright, I so I feel like yeah. brighter, bad. I, I don't want it brighter than Sandara yeah. already is. I haven't heard their other three, though. So. Yeah, I haven't either, so this is all DMS. Uh, Para is just basically Venus with a little bit less treble. It's still more treble than Sundara, but it's it's less treble than Venus. So it's like a better Venus. Still a C tier for me. The Void? Uh, actually, B tier. Excellent tuning. They didn't end up selling them because the build was not good at all. But had they sold them, and if it actually fit your head... Um, That'd be a solid B tier, which was great. The Joker, absolute dumpster fire. How did this happen? Uh, Neumann, NDH20. Uh, yes, that's one of the headphones of all time. <laughs> it's the headphone of all headphones. <laughs> it is a headphone. I gave it a C tier with a tone of B and a subjective of D. It just sounded quite blunted to me. Yeah, I put that in D. Oh, it's mega blunted. It's really blunted. That's why I put it in D as well. Yeah. Uh, NDH30. That one I put in C. I also put it in C. Same for me. C. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tone of B and and uh, subjective of C. Uh, uh, Allo S4X. D tier. I think uh, only DMS has heard those ones, right? It sounds like it uses. It sounds like a headphone that uses a very generic cheap driver, and it does. And the tuning is just okay. Uh, Philips, SHP ninety five hundred. D. Uh, D for me as well. These are the ones that you uh, set I on did set fire, them on right? fire, yeah. I believe I gave these a C. Uh, 9600, also I gave a C across the board. That one's like a higher D. I also gave it a D. Hmm. Yeah, slightly higher yeah. D, but still still D. Okay. I almost gave it a C, but then I looked at some of the other headphones in C and I thought it's, it's not. Yeah, good. that's the issue I'm having right now. Like 9500, I'm tempted. For me, if it's a C, it's a low C. DX3, though... That one, that was like, if they, the X2 was kind of a hit, then the X3 was like, okay, let's take everything decent about that and just turn it into a treble murder machine. I mean, even the X2 was pretty gritty and, and, and like zingy in the in the treble. Like. Yeah, but the X3, they took away the bass. So it's just <laughs> the treble. Okay. So, so that's easily D then. I have I not put that one in that, F. So I can't comment. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, RAL CA1A. Um, yeah, so the CA1A, I, it's so technically capable. It's ridiculously detailed. The tuning, I really quite like. I got along with it well. The spatial placement, like the ability to discern where something is coming from, is not there. Like, it's worse than an HD600, and so that knocked it down a fair bit for me. But overall, I had to give it an A. Yeah, so I gave them a B. Um, but it's that same kind of thing where it's a bit polarizing. Um, I agree that the, you know, the subjective qualities I gave an A, uh, the tonality I thought had issues, but that's also because the, the pads, like I, at, a, at some point they just decided to go with, start making with them with different pads. So the tuning would be different. Um, and there is definitely some, 
I don't know if it's unit variation or pad variation or what's going on because I've also seen measurements of it that were significantly darker as well. So it's hard for me to know uh, exactly how it's going to be for right. everyone. So that's why I, I put it into B tier. The other thing is uh, it does also have a little bit of harmonic, like second harmonic uh, presence there. It's either second or third, um, making it sound a bit 2B in a sense, uh, which could be good or a bad thing depending on the person. Uh, DMS? B tier. A little bit bright for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, SR1B. Uh, also B for me. SR1B. Um, I really like these. I think these are fantastic. You should use them with the EQ, though. We're not meant to be ranking things with EQ, but these literally come with some inserts for XLR and RCA, which add a base shelf, basically. If you don't use those, you get no base. If you do use those, though, uh, they sound fantastic. The vocals on those are some of the best I've heard, I think. There is a little bit of 2 kilohertz hump if you get the positioning wrong. You have to fiddle with that quite a lot. Overall, though, those are an easy A tier for me. Yeah, um, I gave them a B. Uh, basically the same as the CA1A. Uh, Sendy Peacock. This is a, a D across the board if there ever was one. Um, maybe even F. <laughs> that was an F for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm tempted I've to. I've not heard the Peacock. It's, it's just like everything about it was bad. I'm tempted to go F as well bad and expensive like, but they made it of wood so no redeeming features <laughs> yeah the iva uh c tier I, I really like the iva overall i put that in a c i think that these get a lot a lot of hate that they don't really deserve and on tube amps in particular those are really nice so easy c tier for me and built beautifully as well super comfortable so on to sennheiser so the hd 580 i put this in b tier across the board um, which is controversial, I know. No, I think B tier is completely reasonable. I, uh... Yeah, but infinite scale. I think it's reasonable. <laughs> I'm t I'm tempted to knock mine down to a C. In fact, I am going to knock mine down to a C. I had it in B originally, but I'm going to knock it down to a C. Wow, you just made some people very angry. This is... This is I'm sure A I legendary did. headphone. How could you? <laughs> We're going to make a lot of people angry no matter what we do this true. video. That's so, true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just found it a little bit shoutier than the HD 600, so it's that's why it's not yeah. quite uh, as good for me. Well, that's a spoiler. Uh, HD 560S, I put this in C with a tone grade of B and a subjective of C. That is a B tier for me. I had it in C. The tuning, there's something in the treble which I didn't quite get along with, but they're surprisingly technical for the price, so uh, I had overall a C. Yeah. Uh, HD 600... The 600, 6XX, 650. This is where we're really going to make people angry. Yeah. Those pretty much all have to be ranked at the same thing because they're essentially, aside from the 650 having a slightly lighter driver, they're all essentially the same thing because there's enough unit variation that their frequency responses all overlap considerably, and a 650 or a 600 could sound interchangeable. Um, well, especially with different pads, right? Like if you have pads that are worn on a 600 versus a brand new set of pads on a 650... Right. So that said, I would love to put them in S, but realistically, I have to put them in A, just a really strong A. I had to put them in A purely because of the fact that the sub bass extension is just not there. Otherwise, there's so much I like about this headphone, and I probably would have put it in an S. But without that sub bass extension, I, I, can't, I can't put it lower than an A, but I can't put it up yeah. in an S either. So A for me. So between the two, I prefer the HD600. But I put both of them in B tier. And the reason for that is, as Cameron mentioned, the sub bass roll off. And then uh, the other is the three blob effect. Now, it's not something that I care about that much, but I know people are bothered by it. Um, and so I couldn't quite bump it up to an A. So that's why it's at the high end of B for me. Um, but with EQ, I would, I would almost say that, that the HD 600 is like an S tier headphone. <laughs> it's that good. <laughs> I used to dislike the HD 600 a lot more than I do now, and then I ended up listening to a pair for quite a while and just slowly grew to like it more yeah. and more. So uh, my opinion on that's changed over time, but for now I put it in A. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, on to the HD 660S. That for me is a C tier. Me as well. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Uh, They took an HD 600 and then decided to mess with things that don't need to be messed with and doesn't sound as good, so C tier. Shouldn't have a six in the front. It just, it just <laughs> yeah, six sixty S two B tier. They slightly fixed their first attempt. It's a B tier as well. So I would put it ahead of the six sixty S, 
definitely an upgrade over that, but it's still a C-tier headphone for me because um, it doesn't, you know, they there's the whole thing about like, it's got bass now, but it's like, it doesn't really, like it's not like it actually has full bass extension. It's just better than the 660S. You're getting a little uh, bit of dog then, on yeah, camera the, right now, by the way. Okay. Is that like a euphemism or? No, there's a, she's come over to say hello. She's just popped her head into the very corner of the frame oh. and is looking up at me. Okay. How would she rank the HD 660S too? Uh, non-edible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's that's the next tier. Uh, okay. <laughs> HD 800S. Oh, we're gonna fight. Let's fight. Yep. I think that there is now. I didn't like the original 800 as much, but the 800S has to be S because there is no headphone out there that stages like it. My dog is yelling. Just a minute, girl. There's no headphone out there that stages like it. It's also one of the best channel-matched headphones that money can buy. True. And between those two factors, and actually also yeah. the consistency from head to head on it, because it has very low acoustic impedance, I cannot put it in anything other than S tier. That is all true. Um, it's one of the most consistent headphones and most well-engineered headphones in the world. Still. Yeah. I put it in a B tier. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> oh god we really are gonna upset yeah. people with this but it's it's because of the 6k peak that i just i for me that is the i would just delete 6k if i could um but of course yeah this the subjective stuff is pretty high for me as well i give it an a for the subjective qualities because that soundstage is remarkable i was so torn on this one i don't hear the 6k peak as much as some other people i can still hear it i'm not blaine i don't have anti sibilance unfortunately <laughs> um we're not all blessed but with it's not ears. bothersome for me i can listen to those for as long as i like I, i'm i'm gonna say the same thing that i had on the hd 600 is preventing me from putting these in s tier which is that the sub bass extension isn't quite there so i put them in a but they are one of my favorite headphones of all time and i could never sell my pair so right uh on and on then another there's the note, HD 820. <laughs> well, actually, okay, but just before we get there, what what do you guys think of the 8, 8XX? Because I didn't put it on this list, and we should bad. probably add it. Bad, bad. Okay. I've still not heard it. I don't know if I'm missing out on much from what I've heard, but uh, I've not actually gotten head time with it. It was really bad. Okay. Um, 820, speaking of really bad. How did this happen? To me, the HD 820 sounded like you're listening to music with your head underwater in a bathtub. And then anytime there's supposed yeah. to be bass, you just kind of whack your head against the bottom of the tub instead. Yeah. So I'd put it in, how did this happen? <laughs> that is the best description that's, uh, of this headphone. <laughs> yeah, I think we all agree. That's, that's what I got out of it. Yeah. Just leave it at that. HD 700. How, how how did this happen? HG 700 is the sound that you hear when you're going through a lobotomy. <laughs> the, ones, the one thing about it is that people say it has good soundstage. I've I, been a long time since I've heard an HD 700. If you can stand it long enough to notice that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it's F tier for me for HD 700. How did this happen tier for me? On to the fun stuff. HE 1 gotta be s plus it's s plus for me also first one up there s tier for me not s plus subject so the the tonal grade is s plus uh but the you know what no it's not tone grade is s and the subjective is a for me the one thing i would say about that is i don't like the fact that at every single uh time i've seen it being demoed the crossfeed is always on max i think that it should oh, just yeah. be demoed yeah, no, yeah. Like, the same as other headphones. It doesn't need that. It's, I think I'm, it sounds better without the crossfade. It doesn't anyway, need it. But yeah, um, I usually turned that off. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now into the into the sure. Stuff. Oh boy. Um, this is mostly you guys. I have not heard the sure. I've only tried their IEMs. I've not tried their over ear stuff. So uh, DMS, take this one away. Oh boy. Uh, the 840. That was a B tier headphone. It was pretty solid. It was very harmonish. And then they ruined it and made the 840A, which is a D tier. Don't know why. Okay. Don't know why they decided to do that. Uh, the 1840, pretty solid C tier. It's a lot like the slope diffuse field response, but with a bit of a treble spike at the end, which kind of kills it a little bit for me. Um, and then the 1540 is an F tier. It is just infinite mid bass. 
mid base for all of infinity. It's mid base as an infinity stone. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So you got to collect it. All right, on to Sony, uh, the MDR MV1. I give this a C tier across the board, which is to say it's uh, okay. <laughs> C tier is okay. <laughs> uh, it's just bright. It's yeah, too much 6K as as usual. Fair um, enough. ZX110. Why do Wait, no, sorry. The 7506, that's the next one. MDR MDR 7506. 7506 is comfortably a C tier. It's not the best out of that range of Sony headphones. Um but it's it's been around for a long time and it's very consistent. Yeah, I have I have it there as well. Uh, I've only heard the Z1R on 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 this list, so Okay. Now this one's fun. The ZX110. Do we put it in F? Or how did this happen? <laughs> I would take the ZX110 over the Audivina. Or over the yeah. Austrian Audio X55. Yeah, like, I was going to say, it as bad as it is, it is not as bad as some of the things that are in How Did This Happen. Uh, Z1R. It's like the most open, closed-back headphone, but it still has a little bit of wonkiness, so that one's a B. Yeah, it's... Uh... Isn't that like a 9K peak or something like that? I can't remember hearing an obvious peak, but it's been a while now. Um, I just remember the bass on that being really, really fun without yeah. too many clear drawbacks. Uh, so I put that one as a B. Uh, the CD900ST? Uh, I haven't heard any of the rest of these, so these are all you guys. So the CD900ST would be the best Sony headphone if you swapped the pads on it. But if you're not swapping the pads on it, it's a C tier. And they've been making that headphone since the mid '80s, and it's still like it's it's a headphone that's extremely good for localization, and that's why it's popular, specifically in studios. I should note the mist. <laughs> the M1ST is F tier. It is unwearable. The pads are like two millimeters in thickness, and the driver just digs into your ear. Lovely. Yep. V6. The V6 is with the stock pads probably one of the best things that they make it's very harmon um not perfect but it's a headphone they've been making for a long time that's pretty solid the mdr v6 is pretty solid so what tier uh b tier b tier uh one am2 one am2 would be an a tier headphone if it didn't have a treble spike outside of the treble spike it's excellent but it has a big treble spike and that kills it. So for me, that is a B tier also. PFR V1. Uh, D tier because it doesn't produce any frequencies under 500 hertz, which is kind of a big Jesus. deal. But it is a uh, like an ear field headphone. It's a set of ear speakers oh, okay. that float on the side of your head and it does really amazing staging things. Um, the presentation's really cool. It's very speaker-like because it is speakers. So I couldn't put it lower than a D, but I also couldn't put it higher than a D. Spirit Torino. Now I haven't, I have listened to some of these at shows, but not enough to really have a judgment on it. So I'll defer to you guys. Uh, Valkyria. Valkyria is an interesting one. It is the hardest hitting headphone I have heard. Period. The tuning's really wonky, but it's sort of like a twelve sixty six in that it kind of just works for certain genres. It's not an all rounder. I would not have it as my only headphone, but I totally get why some people are really into this. So I put it in B. I would also note, though, that the Pulsar sounds nearly identical at half the price. So, I cannot remember the model names of anything I've ever heard from them. I've heard their lineup. None of them impressed me, but I'm just going to go with haven't heard it, or if it's a model I have heard, then okay. it's probably D or C at best. Twin Pulse? Yeah, the Twin Pulse was the first one I tried. That one, I it's uh, I don't know who gave the green light to release that. It shouldn't have happened. That's a, that's a, that's a how did this happen for me. Uh, Stacks SR007 Mark II I would like tentatively put it at an A tier I put it S tier actually really so basically here's how I think of all the stacks I think they all have generally S tier subjective qualities right but the SR007 I think it's actually the 2.9 that I heard um, that's what it's called <laughs> that one uh, had the most palatable uh, wideband tuning, so it was the least fatiguing to me uh, compared Definitely to like the SR09s and 
and and and and s oh nine s or whatever right so it is s tier for me it's just on the lower side of s tier i uh i definitely like the tuning of it the most out of any of the stacks i've heard other than the x9000 but it was not as technically performant as any of the lambda series that i tried and so it for me kind of had a bit of a odyssey carbon thing where it was sounding yeah. like an e stat trying to be a planar and as a result ending up somewhere where you don't really get the benefits of either to a great extent so i put it in b i liked it but it didn't really have anything that was particularly special about it that i sort of want oh i really want a pair of those now right gotcha i mean i can see it, it makes sense uh sr 09s well s 09 s i put that in c it was just too lean for me i just not enough base basically yeah i put it in a b it's too bright for me but yeah i put it in a because again same thing the subjective characteristics are good but it's too bright for me i'm just thinking there's got there's definitely gonna be people out there for whom it is you know more tolerable and maybe it's people who can afford to <laughs> to buy them. <laughs> if you right. exclusively um, listen to like string music, that's probably one of the best headphones you can get. Yeah. Um, all right, the X nine thousands. That was an A tier for me. Mm. Me as well. I put it in S. I uh, I really like those a lot. I thought that that was just a bit of a step up over anything Stacks had done that I'd heard previously. Yeah, I would rate these a little higher than the O nines, but uh, similarly, uh, just a tad too bright for me overall. I haven't heard the L300 or the L500, so I'll defer to you guys on those. I've only heard the L700, so uh, yeah, DMS, you'll need to take these. So the 300 and the 500 are both B tier. They're not bad. It's definitely one of those headphones that you buy it to EQ it, and if you EQ an L300, then you're basically getting a really good stacks, but not EQ, it's it's B tier for sure for both of them, and they're very comparable. Mm -hmm. The 500 is comparable to the 300 B tier. Um. L700 I do have an opinion on. I put that in A tier with a tone grade of C. This is where E stats get a bit weird, just because some of the ones that you hear, even if the frequency response suggests otherwise, they just sound like they are lacking sub bass. And I had exactly the same thing with the L700. I had a good seal. I had exactly the same thing on the yeah. vintage uh, Lambda Signature and Lambda Pro. Just didn't get enough bass out of them, basically. Uh, super technical, super yeah. detailed and airy. Just extremely technical yeah. yeah so i was tempted even to make it like s plus for the subjective stuff but yeah. at the end of the day s for that yeah someone oh yeah i put that as a c sorry i actually put that as an s because i did get base out of that one I, I was really torn between that and a i was originally leaning towards a and later on i decided that i had to put it in s just because it's like the one stacks that really stood out for me um, but not massively. It's like a really low S for me. Uh, take TH2+. plus. I don't know anything about this. Do you like mid-range? Because that's all you're getting. You guys have seen the Eric Andre show, right? Yeah. There was an episode of that where he said they used to take this kid um, and give him a lot of acid and then jump around him in a circle and yell, Nightmare, 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 Nightmare. Uh, that's the Take TH2+. plus. Okay. Just mids and code Delightful. filtering and nothing else. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Ultrasone 580i. Haven't heard it. Should we just play Tile's review? Or <laughs> was that for that one? Tile did a different one, but the the 580i I had the displeasure of owning. The Either 580i. way, they're both going in F for me. But uh, the Edition 15 is one that I did review. I put that in F tier. It's not in How Did This Happen. It's not that horrific. I am led to believe that it's actually better than the one that Tile reviewed, but I still had a hard time with it. Um, Warwick Acoustics, Bervura. Now, this one for me is S tier for the... Uh, just in general, with S tier tonality and A tier subjective characteristics. For me, solid S tier with the asterisk that if you're the kind of person that listens particularly loud, this won't work for you. I luckily don't, so it was fine, and I absolutely love that system, but I have heard that uh, some people who listen particularly loud were able to basically get it to clip, so. Okay. For me, both Warwick headphones are S+. Plus. I know that the... the really? Interesting. Yeah, the Aperio, I feel like, is a little bit more technically capable, but the Bravura is so incredibly well-tuned, and the Bravura is, like, almost an HE1 to me in many ways. And it surpasses it in some ways while kind of falling behind in others that I feel like it deserves to be in the same tier. 
Um, and Bravo is like one of the most, it's probably one of the cases where I've been the most impressed with a headphone. So both Warwick's for me are S plus. Yeah. I don't know if I can put Bravura in the same tier as Aperio or HE1, so I didn't quite put it in S plus, but I, I'd be tempted to. It's a, it's a high S for me. Warwick as a whole has is, is done pretty well on this ranking. <laughs> well, they only have two headphones. So. Yeah. Two really good <laughs> two headphones. Systems. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Aperio is also only an S tier for me. And the reason is uh, it's S plus for subjective characteristics. It's the only thing on here for me that's S plus. Uh, but the tonality I find not as good as the HE1, for example. And actually, I prefer the Bravura's overall, you know, sound signature. But... You know, this is one where it's like, is the trade-off worth it? And it might be. <laughs> so. I think I, I'd agree. I'd say the Bravura and the HE1 are both slightly better tuned, but the Aperio is yeah. much more technical, I think, than both of them. I think it's quite a bit more technical than the HE1. I So I'd put it comfortably in S+. Plus. Yeah. All right, on to ZMF, ZMF. Uh, or ZMF for Canadians and you Brits. <laughs> sure. DMS is dying inside. All right, so the Otour Classic. Um, I'm going to base my judgment here off of the Otour because that's the one that I owned. I didn't own the Otour Classic, so take that with an asterisk. For me, the Otour is uh, an A-tier headphone. It has to be. It has a tonality that I absolutely loved. So it's S-tier for its tonality for me. Uh, the subjective characteristics were not quite on that same level, but I I quite enjoyed that headphone overall. Yeah, I have to agree. Otor Classic is really just an Otor, but a little bit better. And it's an easy A tier for me, too. Same here. Easy A tier. So next would be the Aeolus, which, something interesting with ZMFs, they come with a selection of pads to pick from. I think the best pad you can pick for the Aeolus is the Hybrid Pad. With the Hybrid Pad, it is like the god king of timbre that sits on his throne on a mountain. Um, and that is an easy A tier if not like a really easy high A tier because of how good its timbre is. I also have it in A tier. Um, I I didn't like it quite as much as the Otour, but um, I can see why people like it. I had A for tonality and B for uh, subjective characteristics. I, I have it in A as well. I would slightly contest the kind of timbre thing. And this is something which I'd say for a couple ZFFs is that I don't necessarily think that just the description of good timbre, I more realistic is necessarily applicable to all of them. A lot of them are sort of almost exaggerating things a bit, which I really like. That's why I like the Atrium so much, yeah. for instance. It's but, very um, romanticized. Yeah, but I wouldn't say that they're the most realistic or natural sounding headphones, but that I don't want them to be. Timbre is something that is actually identifiable in frequency response now, I think. Um, and it, I mean, it, it's not even now, it was before as well. It's just that we have a more fine-grained thing to look at frequency response against and maybe it'd be interesting to see actually how these measure I'm, I'm curious but headphones that are generally well received for good timbre will also typically be fairly dfh or tfe uh, when measured right so anyways the the other ones i'm the atriums i'm gonna defer to you guys because i only heard them at the sh at a show for me, the atrium is a definitive s it's one of those headphones that i immediately heard and was like i have to buy this right now yeah i uh out of all the headphones i've got the atrium is the one that i end up listening to the most like an all-rounder yeah oh 100 yeah. percent. it's not the most technical headphone in the world there are other headphones which are a lot more detailed than it but just it's so close to being a perfect headphone see i would love to listen to it more or listen you know get another chance to listen to one because that what you're describing that's what i'm looking for in headphones these days more than like the 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 crazy you know esoteric stuff i like stuff to sound yeah. like natural i mean you'll get to listen good. to mine when i bring it up yeah uh atrium closed i do have an opinion on this one but that's with the caveat of the pads that it had on it at the show um that i heard that i heard it at i was less into this one than i was the others that i heard so for me it's in b tier i was less into it and then we tried the suede pads on mm. it and almost immediately i thought this is really close to an atrium it sounds extremely similar just not quite as good but it's amazing how close he was able to get it for the fact that it's a close back. I've put it in a B. I would be tempted to bump it up to an A, but I think that it just doesn't quite match the magic of the actual atrium open, so I've, I've kept it in B. Okay. 
I'm really torn on that one because I only heard the show environment, so I haven't spent enough time with it. It's between A and B for me. One of the sets of pads I heard was an A, but I don't remember which pad that was. Probably the suede one. Pretty sure that was the suede yeah. one. Yeah. Could be. For, with the suede pads, it was an A for me. All right. The next one is the Verite Open, and this is where things get a bit spicy because uh, I actually mm. also used to own that headphone. Um, and so here's the thing. It definitely is the most technical or subjectively good for those qualities of the dynamic driver or ZMFs that I've heard. Um, I'd agree. But its tonality is is also very much on the esoteric and flavored side of things. It's quite warm in the, in the upper mids uh, or lower treble, depending on how you define it. So it's, I think for some people looking for that more warm, lush kind of presentation, this could be the perfect all-rounder but for people i'd say for the average person it would be a little bit too on the uh esoteric side of things um, and that's why i gave it a b overall um and then weirdly the verite closed i gave an a because i think it is a little bit more normal just that it has that same 5k uh resonance uh, but overall if i were to buy a verite today it would be the closed I, yeah. I agree with you it's one of the few instances where i prefer the closed version of a headphone compared to the open version yeah. I like them both. They're both quite esoteric and tuning, and it's just not going to work for some people. And others, it's going to be there exactly what they were looking for. I had the uh, the Verite open at a B, and the Verite closed at an A. I also thought that this was one of the ones where the pads just changed things rather than being a definitive best pad. Like the Caldera and the Atrium, there was a pad which I liked the most, and then the other ones I just thought were worse. This one, it was they just sounded a bit different, and they just changed things in different ways. So, DMS. Yeah, I went the same way as Cameron. Verite open, I put B, and Verite closed, I put A. Specifically, though, I loved the Verite closed with the suede pads. Yeah, we're we're all on the same page with that with those two, I think. Um, Caldera. Caldera for me is an A tier. Yeah, I mean, I have a Caldera here. Like the tuning is uh pretty good, but there's a little bit of a treble spike that gets to me. But the technicalities are so good. And then I swapped a pad, which I know we're not counting pad swaps. Without, If you counted pad swaps, this would go into S tier for me. With the stock pads for me, it's an A tier. I think it's okay to count pad swaps with this one because they, they give yeah, you they two come sets with, of pads. Yeah, exactly. But the pad that I would recommend for it, the pad I'd recommend that makes it S is not a pad that they include with it. Oh, uh, okay. That's interesting. It's the Deconi the... LCD suede pad. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to have to give that a go because my favorite pad with it was the ZMF suede pad, but I've not tried the Deconi one. The only reason I've not put it in an S tier is just that treble spike. If that pad clears it up, I would put it in an S tier, but just because we're talking about the stock pads or the pads that you can get to come with it because they give you two sets, I put it solid A. Uh, so out of all the ZMFs that I heard, the Caldera was the one that I would love to get in because... Um, I heard it at the show briefly, and what I heard sounded very good to me. <laughs> so I, I, that was one where I was like, make a note of that, <laughs> try and listen to it again. Yeah, you'll have to listen to, I'll bring yeah. mine up, you can listen to yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's it for the list. It is. How many headphones was that? Uh, was a lot. That? Oh, just over 180. About 200. Yeah, close to two, almost 200. Nice. First, do we have any, like thoughts uh, after having gone through this exercise now i think that there's a lot of things we agreed on and of course there's some things that we disagreed on but not too severely yeah. there's definitely some inexpensive things that made it very high and some expensive things that made it very low uh but that's just the nature of these things it is what it is audio has gotten a lot better over the last few years and as a result some inexpensive things are getting very good i feel pretty good about this list i think that if we averaged out all of our results most things would stay the same and only a few things would actually change but i feel like we ended up with a you know a pretty consistent result for the yeah, most the part yeah the scatter plot would be fairly it would all sort of go in in the same groupings i think for the most part with a couple of outliers here yes and there. um the one thing that i wanted to point out is that uh i think as expected uh well i don't know but for you guys but for my list most most of the headphones on here would be somewhere between b and c there's a lot of b and c's for me um, you know, with fewer yeah. on the extremes. And I, th I think that that's also kind of normal. That's kind of expected. We actually had consensus on most of them or, or were at least understanding of if there was a difference, why the other person felt that way. But there were also a mm -hmm, couple yeah. of them where it's like, 
there's uh there needs to be some sort of qualification right of like you know uh something might be ranked really highly for subjective qualities but really poorly for its tonality like uh, the ab 1266 for example and there were a couple of those and yeah. those are ones where it's impossible to really give a fair ranking to because depending on the person it could be the best thing ever or the worst thing ever <laughs> so um but for the for everything else i think we were pretty darn uh close to one another it's uh it's surprising how we've got such a consensus on so much of it and then there's a few ones where not only did we sort of have different findings or, or different rankings but we understood why we each ranked things different ways but there's a couple ones where we just had quite different experiences and it shows that whilst overall people are going to have broadly similar experiences there are absolutely certain ones where your head shape and H, uh, the headphone transfer function is going to affect things to quite a drastic extent yeah yeah definitely like there's there's basically when it comes to sound quality uh well i mean there's probably lots more than three variables but i'm saying there's three key variables to consider with headphones one is the head-related transfer function, so the anatomy of the person. The other is the headphone transfer function. And the third and probably most important thing is preference. And I think um, given that you can't be sure of what, that's gonna, what those three variables are going to be for any individual, it's impossible to say this is categorically going to sound like this to that person or be preferred um, to any individual. But taken in aggregate taken as a whole you know we can come up with a reasonable picture and i think that's kind of what you see here with these different lists uh, i was just going to say that it's interesting how there's a couple brands that have some just completely all over the place rankings you'd think that you know oh certain companies are going to be really consistent but then well sennheiser goes all the way from an h to an s plus so. yeah that's uh that's interesting yeah i i was thinking that as well and there are some where it's a little bit more consistent but yeah for a lot of brands yeah. it's uh you get you get the full spectrum of you know truly great products to how did these even happen <laughs> so so i think that concludes our list i guess there's gonna be a lot of discussion in the comments already keep it friendly with one another but we do want to know your opinions so leave a comment down there and let us know how you would rank things differently where do you agree where do you not and aside from that, let's wrap up this video, guys. So if you liked it, leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can hit the forums or Discord, both available at the link in the video description. And as always, don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till next one, guys. Peace. Peace. Go do that. Oh, shit, I wasn't recording. No, I'm joking.